Howdy and welcome to the 10 Week Bible Study. This is week six, day three of our study of 2 Corinthians. I'm your host, Darren Hibbs, and today we're talking about 2 Corinthians 8, 10 through 15. Well, welcome back to the 10 Week Bible Study. Again, I'm your host, Darren Hibbs. Would you join me as we pray before we start today? Lord, would you open our eyes and our ears to what your word has to say to us? God, fill our hearts with the knowledge of you today. We want to encounter you through your word. We want to be fascinated by your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With that, let's jump into God's word. I'll be reading today from the NIV. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 8, starting in verse 10. And here is my judgment about what is best for you in this matter. Last year, you were the first not only to give, but also to have the desire to do so. Now, now let's pause there. Go back. Remember, this is where where Paul is talking about taking up a donation to give to the Jewish Christians in Jerusalem specifically. That's what all of this is about is we're giving money to the Christians in Jerusalem because they have been persecuted and oppressed. There's been famine. There's been all sorts of negative things going on there and they're suffering and they need help. They need financial help to uh to to make it. And so that's what all of this is about. He's saying Corinthians, hey, you were the first to be willing to do this. He's but he's like saying, um now it's time to actually open your wallet and give money. So uh you know, you need to get ready here. Verse 11. Now finish the work so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by your completion of it according to your means. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. Uh, Goodness. Back then, they couldn't couldn't borrow money to give, uh, to donate. That's an unfortunate possibility for people nowadays is that they can actually go in debt. They can use their credit card to donate and actually go into debt to donate. Uh, and again, something that televangelists and people like that, they're, they're very aware of is that they have access to money that people don't even have. I've, I've heard stories, many stories of people using their credit card to donate to ministries, thinking that the Lord's going to break through and, and come through for them and, and, and rescue them from financial distress and things like that. And, and, uh, you know, um, I wonder if Paul could have even fathomed people going to debt to give and to donate back then, you know, he's saying, obviously you give out of what you have, not what you don't have. <laughs> um, and, and so, Again, I don't think that's really the point that Paul is making here. Um, he's saying, you know, you, you've got to give according to your means. Uh, you know, the the willingness is there. And I think what he's getting at is the willingness is there for all of these other churches, for the Macedonians, for the Galatians, for all these people. But I think what he's, he's kind of laying the groundwork for here is that even their extreme generosity. I think what Paul is getting at is, is it's, it, it pales in comparison to the means that you Corinthians have. That's, that's what he's kind of laying down here is that they've given out of their great poverty and compared to what you have the ability to give, it's, it's nothing compared to what you can give. The, the Corinth, the, 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 the city of Corinth was a, was well known as a very wealthy place very wealthy. And the, and the believers, as far as we understand, they were very, very wealthy. Um, to some extent, like the, the, the people of Ephesus and some other churches, it was, it was similar. These, this was a, a growing, at, at this point, it wasn't just this massive center of, of cosmopolitan Rome, but it was very much a growing center of cosmopolitan Rome. We know that they had um, larger disposable incomes than many other places in the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire was doesn't was dumping massive amounts of money into the city of Corinth to build it up. There's lots of construction going on. So there's money flowing through this place. There's a lot of people doing very well. So financially they were very well off compared to Macedonia, a lot of other places. So Paul is essentially saying is like, you know, we don't give out of what we don't have, right? We give out of what we have. And what the Macedonians have is 
very small compared to you guys, right? So I don't think he's making a statement about donating on credit, but I think we can look at this and understand, yes, please, please don't donate money that you don't have. Please never do that. The Lord is never asking us to donate money that we don't have. He's asking us to give out of what we do have. Give the first fruits of what you have. Give out of the excess of what you have. Give even like even like the widow's might, right? Give the last of what you have and watch the Lord come through for you. But don't give out of what you don't have. Don't, don't ever do that. Again, I I I I doubt that Paul could have fathomed how easy that would have been, that that would have been a thing. And so I don't think that's exactly what he's saying here, but we can read into it that for our context is please don't give out of what you don't have just because someone else can donate a thousand dollars to something just because the, the televangelist is saying, Hey, you know, we've got all these people giving a thousand dollars a piece and you know that the most you can afford, the most that you have to give out of what you little you have is 10 bucks. Don't get don't get swindled into giving a thousand dollars that you don't have. Give out of what you have. And sometimes, yes, just like Jesus said with the widow's might, you can give all that you do have. And the Lord, knowing that the Lord can come through for you, the Lord really does that kind of stuff. But don't give out of what you don't have. Don't do that. Let's continue on. Verse 13. Our desire is not that others might be relieved while you are hard pressed, but that there might be equality. Okay. So uh, American Christians, hold on tight. What Paul is going to say in the rest of this passage. Oh my goodness. This is, this is rough stuff for us in 2022 when I'm recording this and moving forward. This is going to sound like communism. This is going to sound like so much uh, socialism. It's going to sound like so many things, buzzwords that are going around right now that uh, are, some people are going to be like, yes, heck yeah. And some people are going to be like, this is repulsive. Um, hold on tight and understand what Paul is saying in, in the context here. This equality. This is an important thing for us to understand. Verse 14. At the present time, your plenty will supply what they need, so that in turn, their plenty will supply what you need. The goal is equality, as it is written. The one who gathered much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little. We're talking about when the Israelites were gathering the manna provided for them as they were told how much to gather per person. And so when they went out and did that, that, you know, some people gathered a bunch because they had a bunch of people in their family. And some people gathered a little because they had a few people in their family, but they all gathered as much as they needed. And, and in that time in the desert, when they're wandering the desert and the Lord's giving them manna every day, there was a set amount that they were all supposed to get. And there was supposed to be equality per person, right? Every person was supposed to have so much gathered on their behalf and not a bit more, not a bit less. And, and, and so Paul is saying the whole point of the, the thing that the Lord has established here is equality. Now, the interesting thing that he says here is about the church in Jerusalem. He's saying, hey, you can give out of your plenty to supply what they need and that they can give out of their plenty to supply what you need. Um, I don't think that what he's saying here is I don't think he's actually talking about reciprocity where it's like, hey, you're going to give them money and maybe later they'll give you some money if you're going through a hard time. No, I think what he's saying is, is that you're going to give financially out of your surplus and they're going to give spiritually out of their surplus. They're going to supply things that you need that are not financial. And he didn't explicitly say that, but I think the subtext of what he's saying here, that's kind of what he's getting at is, is that they have... They have uh, spiritual food, should we say, that they can offer to you. And here again, uh, again, if you've got baggage, I've said this multiple times, this is the kind of language that often gets used by, I think, abusive grifters, people that are trying to uh, prey on you to get money for their new private jet or their new Bugatti or whatever, you know, is, is they're asking you to, to give uh, so that you can be provided this spiritual food. I mean, I've heard that exact thing uh, proposed by televangelists before. I find it very reprehensible. 
because uh, that's not that's not the same thing that what Paul's talking about here. Now, going back to this issue of equality, uh, in a, a way, we are talking about uh, socialism. We are talking about communism. We are talking about sharing equally amongst others. It's what the early church did in the book of uh, Acts in the first few chapters. We saw it very clearly in Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 4. Uh, or three, we saw we saw it very clearly multiple times where the church is selling possessions that they have to to get the money to give to those that had a need. Um, doesn't necessarily mean that they sold everything that they had. It never tells us they sold everything that they had, but they they sold things. They they gave money to supply for those that had need. And so that's what Paul is talking about here. Is is he saying like, listen, you have a lot more Corinthians than the rest of these churches. And Paul would know he's traveled, right? I mean, a lot of times if you haven't traveled, you don't know those things. You don't know how impoverished. If you haven't left the United States, sometimes you really don't have a uh, a concept of just what true poverty looks like. I've met so many people who have never left the United States and they consider themselves poor. And while yes, by our standards here in the United States, they are poor, but they have no concept, no concept at all of what true poverty, when we're looking at a world scale, if no concept of what that looks like, you have to travel. You have to go see those things for yourself and, and, and live just a moment in their shoes to understand the depths of poverty that still exist in this world. I've not seen the, the, the poorest of the poor that I've seen in the United States. It doesn't even compare to places that I've been, uh, like Guatemala, parts of Turkey, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's unthinkable in our day and age, the, the level of poverty that still exists, but it's there, it's there. And so, um, you know, the Corinthians, they were wealthy. Now, if you're not traveling a lot, it feels normal to you. You don't know how wealthy you are. You don't know how poor you are unless you can compare that to others. And I think that's what Paul is doing here. I think that's why he's saying, I'm comparing you to the Macedonians. I'm comparing to them because they, out of their hardships, they've given a lot of money. They've given a lot based on their hardships. And I'm asking you to give out of your excess. I'm asking you to give out of your wealth. Paul is essentially saying for you to give at the rate, for you to give at the the, the level of pain <laughs> that the Macedonians gave, it's probably not even going to be possible, right? And there really is, there is a, a, a level of, of, of wealth and excess and surplus that many people have. Uh, where giving, it's not painful at the same rate that people with very little, it's painful to them. Like it's, it costs, they know when they give money, they know what they're saying no to, to give this, right? They know what they're giving up. For so many people in Corinth and so many people in the United States today, it, you're not giving anything up except, you know, maybe a future investment or something, you know, I don't know. But but the thought of what you're giving up hardly ever even crosses your mind because it's not, I'm not giving up anything. This is extra money. This is surplus money. That's the same thing that's going on in, in, in Corinth here. So what he's, what he's priming them for is I'm expecting you to give a lot more, a lot more than what the Macedonians did to supply for our brothers and sisters in Jerusalem, because I know that you have been blessed with excess. That's what he's getting at. And he's saying, listen, just the way, the same way that the families in Israel during the days of the manna, the bigger families, they gathered more, the smaller families, they gathered less. This is the same kind of thing that I'm, I'm thinking about and applying here, right? Is, is that, um, is that you, you should be giving more because you have more. The Lord's blessed you with more, so you should be giving more. I think this is a completely appropriate request to make in their context and what's going on. I think it's an, a, an appropriate thing to, to say even today. I think this has always been an appropriate understanding. And when it comes to that, yes, are Christians, to some extent, are we communists? Absolutely are we socialists? Yes. We believe in sharing with others out of what we have. The, the mantra of, of, of socialism, of communism, right? Out of, uh, from, from those who, who um, 
oh, I can't remember the phrase from the Communist Manifesto. It's it's uh, from those with means to those with needs. That's essentially, that's not the actual phrase, but that's essentially what it's, what it's saying. And that's what we are. That's who believers are is yes. Yes, that's who we want to be. That's who we want to aspire to be. Now, listen, as an economic model for governance, it's a disaster. It's a disaster when you when you at the at the 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 force of government at the end of a spear or a gun, you start forcing people to live that way. That's a completely different thing than out of your free will because of the sacrifice that Jesus has made that we give like that. That's completely different. Completely different than being forced to by our government. Two very different things. So our generosity should spring forth from what we know we have been given by Jesus. So I think this is a a perfectly reasonable thing that Paul is doing here based on who we are as believers. For the 10-Week Bible Study, I'm your host, Darren Hibbs, and I can't wait to see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching the 10-Week Bible Study. If you've enjoyed this, would you consider doing that whole like and subscribe and bell thing you're always hearing people talk about? It really helps other people find out about the show, and my heart is for people to fall in love with God's Word. Thank you. Thank you.